Okay, this is pretty horrible. Share, 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 share. I can't share. Okay, it's Thursday, Throwback Thursday, and today I was debating on what phone to show this time. Um, last week I, ch I checked out the Samsung, Samsung, it was a blackjack, but it was for S Sprint. It wasn't a blackjack, it was called something else. I forget what it was, but anyway, it made me think about portrait QWERTY keyboards. I was going to show the Motorola Q, but I don't know why, the battery is not working properly, so... That's not working. So instead, I'm gonna fall back to this handset, the Pantech Matrix. I'm not sure if any of you folks remember this phone. I remember it because it was a pretty cool feature phone. It was a text messaging you know, phone. Um, not only for the fact that you could type messages with the landscape QWERTY keyboard, it slid this way, but also slid upright like that. So it's a regular slider. So you have a numeric keypad in combination with a QWERTY keyboard. So that really sh stood out for me. It was striking. Different from the usual flip phones, slider phones. It just a dual form factor in that way. So now when I look at this again, you know, I, re I remember reviewing this probably five or six years ago, but um, compared to the phone today, it's pretty thick. It's almost, it's, it's, it's ginormous. Um, I would say probably half an inch, a little bit over half an inch, three quarters of an inch thick from the looks of it. Um, I like the fact that it had that dual, you know, slider function, and I know that they made a Windows, um, Windows Mobile version of this, the Pantech Matrix Pro, similar layout, similar design, but of course, instead of this feature phone OS, you're going to have Windows Mobile there. So, up front, you have your display. Let me see if I could pull up the specs on this phone here, but it is, let me see if I could get this properly. Okay, it's loading right about now. Okay, so um, we can load any faster here. It's 2.2 inch display, so pretty tiny, not touch screen for those of you wondering. Um, it has a resolution of 176 by 220 pixels. Considering the screen size, that equates to a pixel density count of 128 pixels per inch. So when it comes to today's standards, that's pretty low. Um, nowhere close to retina level, of course. So it does look kind of pixelated, not as detailed, but that's expected. This is how it was a few years back. So you have your, your numeric keypad. It's flush, nice backlit illumination with it, which is nice, nice distinctive blue color. Can't miss it. Same thing goes with the QWERTY keyboard with, with the uh, landscape option. Now, the thing I remember I didn't like about the keyboard, though, is that it's flush. It's actually recessed. It looks like it's flush, but it looks like the numbers and the buttons themselves are recessed underneath the uh, uh, the surface here. Um, there are good spacing. I don't remember typing too quickly with this one here. Okay feedback, not the best. You have your numerical numbers right here on the right side if you want to use them. And let's see what else here. On the back, you have a 1.3 megapixel camera, nothing special. I'm not, oh, this is the uh, speakerphone right there. Get access to the battery, of course. Remove the back cover, it's plastic, glossy. Volume control on the right, left hand side. Microphone on the bottom. On the right, you have your proprietary charging and headset port. I bet you guys don't miss those days. Uh, you have also dedicated shutter key, just a single shutter, uh, single press one. And on the top, it looks like you have a micro SD card slot. And you do, because you just looked it up, I think. So let's see how we pop this guy up. There we go. Pop it in. You have expandable storage. Probably accepts up to two gigabytes, but hey, that's pretty, pretty, pretty nice that it offers that. So let's look at the UI. The UI, real quick, straightforward, simple. Your this is what the old school AT&T layout looked like. So music player, messaging, yellowpages.com, MediaNet, the old school browser, Media Mall for your apps and all the other services like uh, ringtones and wallpapers and whatnot. AT&T GPS, the things we take for granted today. It was a premium, you know, a few years back, but you had the option using GPS with this. My Stuff, which is uh, an area where you keep all your audio, your games, your content, your multimedia stuff. So you have it. You have tools and utilities here. 
recent calls, camera, video camera. Let's take a look at the camera itself. So this is the camera UI. So here it is, the camera UI. Let's see what options we have here. You do funny frames. Let's see. Let's say yes to that. Image size changed. Okay, it just looks like it applies a border around there. TV, car, kid, birthday. You could do screen one, chicken one, Marilyn Monroe. You could be Zorro. You could be the king, queen, heart, sun, rainbow, pig, and igloo. Okay, let's go back here. So you have that. Let's see what other options we got here. Settings. Let's go to settings here. See what we got. So you can adjust the white balance, typical automatic daylight, tungsten, fluorescent. So you have that. Some effects, sepia, negative, black and white. Timer, of course. And you can select the size. So this is a little bit less than seven, uh, a little bit better than 720p uh, resolution in terms of picture size. So 1.3 megapixels equates to 1280 by 960. But you can lower it down to whatever you want. QVGA, VGA, and uh, 1024 by 768. I forget which one that is. Advanced picture quality, shutter speed, yada, yada, yada. So that is that with the camera UI. If we go back, we could take a look at the video camera. It's a separate thing. Let's see what options we have here. Camera mode. Oh, okay. okay. Guess not. You could switch between. You have to just go to the menu setting right there. Settings. Daylight. Same thing. Same thing. Now you could shoot in video various uh, resolutions. So 176 by 144 is the maximum. So pretty weak compared to today's standards. But that's what it was back then. It was a nice phone. I liked it for the fact that it had dual form factor. It was different. Uh, feels pretty, you know, solid for the most part, even with the moving parts and whatnot. Directional pad in the front, dedicated key for your music player, your soft keys for your pickup end button, your context menu buttons on top, flush with the keypad, but a good clicky response, nice backlighting. It was a good phone for the time. You know, if you love text messaging, it was great, but, you know, I wouldn't find myself using it nowadays. So that is the Throwback Thursday. This is for the Pantech Matrix. And hopefully I'll do something better next week.